Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with episode number 333 of Ask Dave. Today, I'm looking at a question that was received from Alan, NM5WL. He has a very interesting question, and I did a little work on this and discovered that the answer is not so simple as I thought. It says, if I add a 600 watt amp to my setup, what coax do I need to use? Currently, everything is RG8X. Now, I'll be very straightforward with you. RG8X is my favorite coax. I use it for a lot of things. But for things having to do with power, I tend to kind of lean a little bit more toward RG213 or LMR400, uh, whichever you like better, uh, something with more power handling capability. Uh, what I did was I did the actual calculations based on the information given in the antenna book, and the result was rather surprising. At first glance, it seemed like it would handle the power just fine. But looking a little bit more deeply into what's going on, we find out there's more to the story. So let's go through these charts. We're going to look up the coax characteristics in the ARRL antenna book. This is the 23rd edition. I believe they're on the 24th edition now, but it's uh, 23rd edition. Now, in the 23rd edition, if you go to table 23.1 on page 23.23, you find this, ex this is a table, this is an extract from the table that's on those pages, nominal characteristics of commonly used transmission lines. And if you look down at RG8X, down toward the bottom of the page, you will see that there are quite a number of types that you can get from different manufacturers, but they all share the same maximum voltage, maximum RMS voltage of 300 volts. Now, what is the failure mode if you exceed this? Okay, it's not just making the coax warm you could actually exceed the breakdown voltage between the shield and the center conductor. In other words, have an arc fault. So this is not a number that you want to exceed. Yes, there's a safety factor built into it, but still not a number you want to exceed. Well, let's do just a little derivation here, and I'm going to put this derivation in here because sometimes people like to see it. This is technician level stuff, this page right here. So if you're an extra, you can close your eyes for just a minute, but then you'll need to come back. We're going to derive the equation for max power. Ohm's law is uh, E equals IR, and we're going to solve for I. I equals E over R. The power law is P equals E times I. E is the voltage, I is the current, P is the power, R is the resistance, okay? Now we're going to substitute E over R for I, so we get P equals the voltage times the voltage divided by the resistance, which we can rewrite as the power is E squared, the square of the voltage, divided by R. Now what's R? Well, when we're dealing in situations like this, R is the characteristic impedance of the coax, which is 50 ohms, what we're looking at here. Okay, so what's the max permissible power then for uh, this cable? Well, 300 volts is the maximum permissible voltage. So if you plug that into that formula there, you get 1800 watts. That's a lot of power. It seems like a lot. Okay, and it is if, if the SWR is one to one. If the SWR is one to one, then all that power goes to the load and none comes back. Okay, then you can get 1800 watts into that coax, but no antenna will give you a perfect one to one SWR across the band. You're going to have to deal with bad SWRs. And let's take a look at what it does. Let's go into this right here. This is a little thing I put together to show what happens inside a cable that has 
a input in, or it has a characteristic impedance of 50 ohms and has an SWR of 3 to 1. Now, the forward wave in this is the dark blue one, okay? The dark blue wave is going forward in, at 1. We'll just call it 1, unity. And then the reflected wave coming back is at 1 half. Now, these voltages add inside the coax. And you'll see that there are times when the peak voltage for the standing, so-called standing wave, it doesn't really stand, does it, um, is at 1.5. So it's 50% higher than the forward voltage. So if the forward voltage is 200 volts, then the maximum voltage in the coax for 3 to 1 SWR will be 300 volts. Okay, do you get that here? The cyan line or the light blue line it goes up to 1.5. So if 1 is 200, then 1.5 is 300. So let's go to a chart that shows what that means. So for P equals E squared over R, 300 volts max means 200 volts forward. That's what your amp puts out. 200 volts forward gives 800 watts. So you could have a max of 800 watts going forward to the 3 to, 3 to 1 SWR, and that will max out your cable. Okay, now the SWR here is 3 to 1. Now 3 to 1 is not a terrible SWR. You can use an antenna tuner to pick that up just fine. But what happens if the SWR is greater than 3 to 1? Well, let's go to the max case here, okay? This would be an open or a short circuit. In other words, infinite SWR. The forward voltage in here, the blue line, equals the reflected voltage, which is the red line, because they're both reflected. Um, the maximum voltage is the black line, which is additive for the two. And this truly is a standing wave because no energy is moving anywhere. The SWR is infinite, okay? And the maximum voltage is twice, twice the voltage uh, going forward, okay? Twice the voltage. So if we figure this out, an infinite SWR which is a shorter and open. Looking at the formula, again, 300 volts max means 150 watts maximum forward, and that's going to give you, are you ready for this? 450 watts max. <laughs> Whoops. This is less than the amplifier's power output, which is 600 watts. Now, actually, you're probably okay. Because the amplifier will fold back in the, event, in the event of a bad SWR. So if the wind breaks your line or something like that, you're going to see the high SWR, but the amplifier will protect itself if it's a modern amplifier. It probably, you won't transmit very long with that high SWR because you're going to want to fix it. But note, if you tune it out, what is beyond that point, you're still getting very high voltage on that line. Now, single sideband average power is usually 20 to 40 percent of max. So you're not going to be putting out a huge amount of power. But look at this. You're running kind of close to the edge, okay? With the 450 watts max capability, if, if there's an open or a short in that cable, and if you do insist on putting power into that thing, you may find that you, the coax breaks down because you've exceeded the max voltage in here. So I would recommend, since you are on the hairy edge, with 600 watts, putting in a sturdier cable between the amplifier and the antenna. Now there are lots of different kinds of cable available. MFJ is now sending the messy Paolini cable. I have a piece of that going out to the 
uh, step IR, big IR antenna. Uh, there is RG213, which is easy to work with, but not if you're going to solder the cables. I was never able to do that, so I had to go to crimp cables for RG213. And then the LMR400, you can put standard crimp cables on it, but you would be better off with the LMR uh, times microwave um, crimp-on fittings, which are different from your standard crimp-on fittings. And they require special tools and all that, which they sent me so I could look at them. They're beautiful, and they make beautiful connections, but they are a little pricey. So um, different things that you can do, but I would go to a coax that's physically bigger. Uh, the uh, 213 and the uh, 400 are cables that are 0 0.405 inches in diameter instead of the smaller RG8. So there, to answer that question, when you go to an amplifier like 600 watts, I would seriously consider a stronger cable between the amplifier and the antenna, or between the amplifier's antenna tuner and the antenna, because when there's a high SWR on there, which there could be for just about any reason, you exceed the breakdown voltage of the cable if you're using RG8X. So as much as I love RG8X, I'm going to recommend it against it in this case and tell you go get some LMR400 or RG213. The easiest way to deal with the cable ends on that, order the cable with the ends already on it. That's a lot easier. Uh, people like Coax USA uh, make them. You can get them from DX Engineering. There's all sorts of places you can get coax cables with the ends already on them. And if you follow my recommendations, you're going to have a ground rod right outside your station with a lightning arrestor. So that's a great place to connect your coax. Of course, you've got to get it into the house too. So you end up needing two pieces of coax. Well, there you have it. We took a deep dive into what seemed like a simple question and came up with an answer that the RG8X is probably best left to barefoot 100 watt stations, maybe 200 watts, but probably not more than that. And uh, I <laughs> kind of look forward to your comments on this because I suspect there's going to be quite a few. So uh, please subscribe. Uh, when you subscribe, you are giving your personal vote of confidence to YouTube, saying, hey, I like this channel. You should share this with other people, other like-minded people. And also, please take a look at dcastler.com support for different ways that you can help fund this channel. And until we next meet, 73.